You're probably not going to see Sunlight Jr. in a cinema, but thankfully it was released on iTunes recently, which is how I got to see it. This is one of those character-focused indie dramas that deserves some positive feedback and a decent return on its low budget. It focuses on the good and bad times of a low-income couple around the same time that they find out that the woman in the relationship is pregnant. The movie follows how the pregnancy affects their relationship and their lives, even as they struggle to scrape out a living for themselves. The movie's success will hinge on whether you get to like these two characters and sympathize with them. Personally, I think the movie succeeds in doing that. Partly thanks to the writing, but also thanks to the great performances given by veteran actors Matt Dillon and Naomi Watts. These two really breathe life into their characters. Seeing Richie and Melissa living like an ordinary couple makes for both emotionally tense arguments, but also some genuinely sweet moments between them. I believed that I could eventually bump into a couple like them if I looked hard enough. Melissa and Richie both have their obstacles to face. Melissa is overworked and underpaid at her job, trying desperately to get a grant for college. Meanwhile, Richie is in a wheelchair and suffers from the beginnings of alcoholism and an inferiority complex due to his physical limitations. Both the actors do a phenomenal job showing these characters as the tension mounts in the form of ordinary life problems. And that's where the strength of the movie lies. The movie is grounded in realism when it comes to Richie and Melissa's struggle. Unfortunately, the downside to Sunlight Jr. is the fact that nobody else in the film comes close to the development that Melissa and Richie get. It's true that Anthony Caron does a good job playing a creepy assistant manager, which most people have had to deal with once or twice in their lives, but aside from that, the other characters don't have much to work with at all. This is especially true for Norman Reedus, who is absolutely wasted in a very one-dimensional role. His last scene in the movie leaves a lot more questions than we get answers for. So if you don't get sucked into Richie and Melissa's story, you won't have much else to focus on. Personally, I quite enjoyed the main story, and I really liked the lead performances, so this wasn't an issue for me. What also got to me about this movie was the ending. At more than one point in the last 20 minutes or so of the film, I dreaded the cliches that I knew must be coming, but the movie thankfully doesn't go for them. They go for an ending that will divide opinions, but ultimately I like how they showed the ending that they did. I feel like it isn't an ending we often see in movies, even now. And I like that it went for that option. And this is what ultimately saved this movie and made it worth watching the genuine build-up of a relationship between two people and the realism of their interactions, conflicts, and decisions. With that in mind, you can choose to find this movie and give it a watch, but at least now you know what you'll be getting into if you decide to watch it.